Autogenous particulate bone is a terrific material for various GBR bone augmentation techniques. It's readily available and biologically it provides all the attributes that we want in a bone graft material. Now in the last episode we took a look at bone scrapers as a way to harvest particulate bone. Today we're going to review the other method using a special rotary drills that are designed specifically for bone harvesting. I will show you the various types and how they work. So let's get started and see what's on our tray. In the last episode, we talked about bone scrapers for harvesting autogenous particulate bone. They provide an efficient and a very effective way to harvest a significant amount of bone that we need for various types of bone grafting. Now, it does require some hard work to scrape the bone, especially if we're working with a very hard cortical bone in nature. However, there's another technique using specialized rotary drills, which are certainly less labor intensive and yet are quite effective for harvesting uh, particulate bone. These drills are used with your dental implant handpiece at a relatively low RPM at about 2500 and with lots of irrigation to avoid heat induced injury to the osteoblast. Now the burr gouges into the bone and then collects the harvested bone in a small chamber. Today I'm going to review two main systems that we use commonly. The first is this rotary drill bone harvesting drill kit called One Self Bone Collector, OSBC, from JK Dental Group. The drills in this kit connect to the handpiece with a routine latch type connection. It has a bone cutting end, a shaft, a collection chamber, and a plastic depth control that fits right over the burr that provides a positive depth stop. This is a reusable burr that can be autoclaved. The drill is placed perpendicular to the bone and then rotated at a relatively low RPM at about 2000 to 2500 with lots of irrigation and taken to its maximum depth of about five millimeters as it is guided by the plastic stop. The harvested bone is then collected on the side of the burr and contained within the plastic stop. So in order to remove the bone, simply we pop out the plastic sleeve and then use a curette to transfer the bone to a dish and get it ready for the grafting. It provides a relatively small amount of finely sized particulate bone. So you might need to use multiple sides to get the amount of the bone that you need. The drill kit comes in four different diameters ranging from four to seven millimeters. So you would select the one that is most appropriate to the size of the donor site. Now typically, if I'm harvesting the bone from the ramus, I'll probably use a four or five millimeter diameter burr, whereas if I'm in the chin area, I can easily use a seven millimeter diameter for harvesting the bone. This is a relatively a simple design and provides the amount of bone necessary for a typical socket graft or smaller defects. The second rotary bone harvesting system comes also in a kit with different diameter drills. This system consists of the bone harvesting burrs which are housed in a chamber where the harvested bone is collected. The burr is connected to the latch shaft which basically screws to the chamber. To harvest the bone, you place the burr perpendicular to the bone surface. The tip of the burr engages into the bone and then the outer part of it will create a circular osteotomy while the inside burr grinds the bone into a particulate form. To remove the bone, first you'll need to detach the burr from the handpiece. And then using the small wrench and a driver that the kit comes with, you unscrew the shaft from the chamber and then slide it out, exposing the bone. The bone that is retained around the shaft can then be curated out of the system and placed in the dish. Then you replace the burr back into the chamber and tighten it with the wrench and then back on the handpiece for the next cycle. 
These drills come in different diameters as well and based on the location and size of the donor site, you will select the appropriate one. Now the ramus is probably the best and the most common site for harvesting autogenous bone. So typically the four or five millimeter diameter drills works quite well here. Now if you're using the chin as a donor site, again, you can go to a wider diameter drill and harvest more bone during each cycle. It's important to note that these drills, unlike the OSBC, do not have a depth stop. So it does require a great care not to over drill. So you have to make sure that you have a CBCT and carefully measure the distance from the crestal bone to the mandibular canal. And make sure that you're staying at least two to three millimeters away from the, uh, the nerve. To avoid over drilling, go slow and advance very gradually with total control. Now both of these rotary instruments are quite effective in bone harvesting with less muscle than you would need with the scrapers. But remember that the physical quality of the bone that you harvest in this fashion is much finer than the ones that you get from scrapers. So I don't think there's necessarily a difference in the healing and the quality of the matured bone at the end, but it does change the handleability and the packing process to some degree. You can find the links to these instruments in the video description below. To get more information and see some case examples of how we use bone harvesting rotary drills, check out our videos and expanded articles in our website, facialartdentalforum.com. If you like this episode of What's on Our Tray, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for our next episode. Thanks again for joining us and make sure to tune in on the next episode of What's on Our Tray.